So, uh, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Sergey. I work in the operating system continuous integration team as a software engineer. Uh, in a nutshell, our team are helping subsystem teams to onboard packages integrating. On the other hand, we have like bunch of tools inside the team uh, that should be deployed. So, each tool is deployed in a different way. Uh, there was a problem. Uh, same. Uh, some of them were deployed automatically, for example, using GitLab CI. Some of them were deployed using Jenkins, and some of them were deployed manually. Uh, if you need to deploy something uh, and you are not uh, not an owner of the tool, so it's great if there are some documentation about it. It was really pain to upgrade or downgrade the tool. And it was really hard to say what exactly deployed on production. Uh, as you see here, like, uh, like several tools uh, and applications that we use for uh, uh, like in our team and uh, like most uh, all the all the people uh, in in company uses it so uh, it, it was really difficult and uh, we needed this unified deployment process to know what exactly deployed on production and uh, like uh, deploy it in the same way to standardize things and uh, Etc. So uh, let's uh, go for it. Uh, what do we want? Uh, we wanted to have like our code just deployed in production. And in case of any issues or new features, we want to be able to upgrade on our or downgrade our deployment. We want to deploy code to production, and uh, we want to know what exactly deployed. So. Uh, it's uh, worth to know, like for example, Git commit SHA of the deploy of the source code, the deployment configuration, and we should be able to roll out our application or tool uh, any moment and create like the same uh, deployment to another cluster, for example. Uh, as we update our tools maximum uh, like once per week, usually it's like maybe uh, once per month or once per several months. Uh, deploy to production. Uh, as fast as possible, it's not about the uh, unified deployment process. Uh, the unified deployment process, it's about uh, stability and creating like similar deployment. It's about like, debugging uh, stuff and knowing what exactly deployed on the production. Uh, what tools we use for this? Uh, we use GitLab CI and Helm. Uh, GitLab CI, it is, uh, as you know, uh, is a part of GitLab and you can use it out of the box. You don't need to install it or set up it. It's just uh, in it. Uh, and it's very well documented. So you can find any answer on probably uh, any questions you have or issues you've got. And it's a really cool thing for newcomers. So it's really easy for contribution. Uh, compared, for example, with Jenkins, when uh, you need to know uh, like uh, groovy a bit you need to know how it works you need to know how to debug it uh, like in our case uh, GitLab CI uh, has the same uh, functionalities as Jenkins but uh, uh, as we keep uh, things simple so it's much better for uh, newcomers to start from this and uh, uh, for everybody in uh, in our team because it's like just YAML files uh, Helm. Uh, we decided to use Helm. Uh, I, I just uh, uh, have to say like a few words, what is Helm? Uh, so Helm is a, dev a deployment tool for automation, creation and configuration and deployment applications and tools. Uh, first of all, it is a package manager for YAM files. Uh, so you can have a Helm chart package as well as you have any DevNF or for example, YAM package version. With the Helm, you can have uh, your deployment parameterized. Helm has a file that uh, with variables that could be set. Also, you can provide variables as a parameters in this in the command line, like for example, with Ansible. Uh, also, it has templates, tests, and uh, those tests could be used, for example, for deployment. Uh, for example, if you uh, run, uh, you can run Helm tests after the deployment to make sure that everything works as expected. 
Uh, of course, if you, for example, uh, use GitHub, you can use GitHub Actions. Or if you like get used to uh, Jenkins, you could use, for example, Jenkins instead of GitLab. And instead of Helm, you can use, uh, I don't know, maybe Ansible or Argo CD or Terraform, etc. So it's our choice, and uh, I will explain a bit more about uh, why we chose it. So uh, continue with Helm. Uh, as you see here, we have like. Uh, a simple output of uh, Helm history, uh, and uh, it describes like how many times we deployed the application and uh, when it was updated. Uh, status of application, as you see, it's like uh, the last uh, revision uh, is deployed on Friday, right? And uh, here I will explain later. We can uh, we have. Uh, chart version is uh, as i said uh, that helm creates a package and it uh, uh, has own version like for example yaml file and we can specify application version uh, and in description uh, we can see which image used for this and uh, uh, which uh, configuration so and it's pretty easy to uh, to switch uh, to any or roll out to any helm revision uh, revision you have uh, so uh, I will explain a bit in details later about it. So, and we came up with the idea to have, like, to separate uh, our all the deployment process into three repositories. So, uh, one repository uh, have a source code. Uh, the second one is deployment repository, is repository with Helm charts, and second and third one is a repository with. Uh, uh, configuration. So uh, this third repository is just uh, like YAML file uh, that uh, takes parameters from code repository and deployment repository, and you can easily deploy to production. Uh, let's take a look uh, like inside if, if, uh, each of repositories. So source code repository, uh, the idea is uh, having Docker image uh, after uh, you create a merge request. So once a merge request is created, GitLab CI built an image, uh, we use Kanika for it, and uh, sends it to the QA repository. A Docker image has a tag equals to git commit sha. So for example, uh, for hello world application, uh, we will have like, uh, we could have possibly uh, this uh, tag. So, and that's it. So you create merge request, you have image with specific tag. Uh, here is an example where you can use, for example, QA repository uh, for distro build sync uh, tool uh, that uses like different uh, uh, GitHub for, for each images. Uh, deployment repository. Uh, it's similar uh, to the source code repository. On the merge request, GitLab uh, is built a Helm package and sends it to the Helm chart repository. Helm chart repository could be an uh, FTP server, for example, uh, where packages are located. And uh, you need to remember that also each time uh, deployment code is updated, Helm package uh, version should be updated also. Uh, as you see in this example, it is like a normal FTP server and uh, you have uh, like uh, each version of the Helm package here. So uh, Helm package, uh, this uh, here, uh, it's just uh, YAML files that will be deployed and uh, then applied as, uh, for example, Kubernetes or OpenShift objects. Uh, deployment configuration repository. Uh, this is the last step in our chain. So it uh, has deployment config file and uh, that contains information about the OpenShift and Helm configuration. So uh, let's take a look deeper. So uh, this, like, it's part of the file, and it look, looks like this. So uh, here we have like OpenShift configuration. In our case, it could be like Kubernetes configuration or etc. Uh, and here we specify like. Uh, image tag, uh, we specify a registry where can we get those image, uh, we can specify like projects, namespace, etc. And we have Helm configuration. So uh, in, in this image, like our code, like source code is located, right? And uh, for Helm configuration, uh, we like can specify like chart name, uh, uh, config commit and uh, chart version. 
and uh, here, as I said before, we can uh, specify, uh, we, we can uh, like pass uh, values uh, to to the Helm through uh, through the file. So, for example, we have a production file uh, that uh, Helm configuration production file uh, that we can specify. For example, Git repository where code is located. Uh, we can specify. Uh, I don't know, volumes, uh, secrets, uh, environment variables, etc. For example, if you want to deploy uh, your application uh, to test environment, to stage environment, and to production, you can have like three, uh, three variants of files here. And you can, for example, specify uh, one uh, resources like uh, to the uh, for test environment, like for example, Zap will, will will use uh, one gigabyte of RAM. And for the production environment, it could use uh, like 10 gigabytes of RAM. So it's uh, nice to have several files for each uh, configuration that you have. Uh, but also you can use like a deployment configuration file, like to also several files. But we use one, one file for uh, configuration and several files for uh, Helm files for uh, deploying up uh, to different, uh, like with different parameters. Uh, so let's summarize. Uh, from the code source code repository, uh, we get a Docker image with specific tag. Uh, from the deployment repository, we have the Helm package with specific version. Uh, all of this, uh, like files, could be specified. Uh, uh, like uh, then it will pass to the uh, config repository. Helm configuration is the file is about like uh, configuration of uh, Helm deployment. It could be uh, like consist uh, environment variables, volumes, uh, secrets, etc. And once we have like everything, we have image, we have Helm package, we have configuration for Helm package. Uh, we have like one file that uh, like not all, all of the stuff there. And uh, then we can like run in a CI job, just uh, deploy it to production or to the any environment we have. Uh, so uh, as I said before, uh, our deployment process is not about exactly like to deploy change, uh, like deploy changes fast, but it's about stability uh, on the first place. So if you want to deploy some changes, you should uh, like make changes to the source code repository. Uh, then you should uh, like merge those changes and uh, uh, like get uh, image tag from it. Uh, then you should go to the deployment repository with the, uh, uh, like and change deployment uh, file with the new image tag and then merge changes. So uh, like uh, from the first, first uh, point of view, it's like a little bit over engineering because you should uh, like uh, change uh, code two times uh, when you make some changes. But uh, then in a long in a long term perspective, you, you can just, uh, you know, it's very easy to uh, to see what exactly was uh, what and when was exactly changed and what exactly is deployed to production. And uh, if in case of like any changes, uh, you can easily like ro roll out or upgrade your deployment. And uh, like for our needs, we just uh, change, uh, like we divided this by layers, you know. Uh, of course, it's possible to keep all of the stuff in one repository and you can like have like uh, one repository and deploy for it. But uh, if you have like a bunch of different uh, different applications and tools, it's uh, pretty difficult, for example, to migrate from one cluster to another, like having everything in one repository. It's really important to divide it by layers uh, and uh, you can easily, like for example, change like downloading one repository that consists on deployments config for all the tools. So uh, you can easily like uh, deploy it and change it uh, for all the applications. So there was a the point of it. And uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, I will check for the questions. If uh, have some. Looks like we don't. So if you have any.
plus ask. Yes, you can write to the chat, you can put it on the Q&A, or you can join the video stream, whatever you like. Yeah, also I wanted to mention that, for example, uh, maybe you, uh, like, uh, in your case, you shouldn't use, like, all of the uh, all of the tools or all of the applications that uh, here. For example, if you want to deploy, like, Jenkins, for example, you don't need code repository at all. You, you just could have, like, uh, a deployment repository and configuration repository for deployment. Uh, yes, if you use some, like, uh, applications uh, that third party yeah or if you have like only only the one application you can uh, for example create uh, in git uh, like mm, directory and inside the directory you can create subdirectories and keep it in one place like with, with one application like for now it's better to keep separate deployment uh, like uh, code repositories in one place deployment repositories in one place and uh, like configuration and sort place. So uh, you can easily change for all of the uh, tools that you have. Uh, for example, if you're going to migrate to another cluster, it's like uh, you can, can be, it can be done in just uh, like a few hours, uh, all of the migration. And uh, having it uh, like in code repository, all of the uh, deployment stuff and configuration stuff, it will take like much, uh, much more time that, uh, for example, uh, in our case, when we separated it. Okay, I have a question. I hope I didn't miss it. But uh, so, how did you choose the tools you are going to be using? Uh, why these specific ones? Uh, yeah, so, so we had like uh, several options here and uh, like, uh, as I said before, like GitHub, we use like GitLab CI because it's like uh, it works just out of the box, and you, you don't need to tune it, uh, you don't need to to manage it. It just works, and uh, 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 like it's easy. It's it's easy for newcomers, and it's easy like because it's like documentation uh, of it. And uh, uh, about Helm, we had like several choices, choices, and we tried uh, like different variants. For example, we tried uh, Ansible for deployment, uh, and uh, uh, like it counts uh, actually that Helm is a little bit complicated, but. Uh, in general, uh, it's uh, like really easy when you start using it. It's uh, really easy to uh, just adopt your files uh, and uh, YAML files to the uh, deployment, to, to the Helm process. Uh, so for example, uh, if you use Ansible, it's much more uh, like, it's, it's more difficult. It's more work for uh, debugging, uh, for like keeping it uh, together, and uh, what why Helm good is it handles all of the resources you you deploy. So, for example, uh, if you specify like deployment config, like secrets, and uh, like some other OpenShift object or Kubernetes object, it uh, and you deploy it. And when you delete, for example, your application, it will delete everything that it created before for you. So. Uh, when you, for example, using uh, like uh, normal commands, uh, like uh, CLI commands for deploy something, uh, it could be like created like bunch of resources that you don't even know about it. When, when then you check it, you should like delete it one by one. But using Helm and uh, like create uh, update resource with Helm, it manages all of this uh, stuff. And uh, so if you delete, you should yeah, like, you you are sure that it's uh, deleted completely from the OpenShift and, and no garbage at all. Yeah, so it, it, it's really cool. 
and I also want to mention that all the uh, like deployment processes uh, automated. Uh, like we don't uh, tune it manually. You know, sometimes you want to deploy something and then go to the open shift and manually create some stuff there. <laughs> don't do this because you, you will forget later in a few months that you created it and it could influence in, on other applications that you, you have, for example. So uh, only in automatic way. You change, for example, once you change something in deployment config, uh, you test it, you change it, and then you just uh, deploy it uh, in automatic way and it works fine. Okay, thank you. Okay, three minutes to go. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like we are going to have more questions. So it's up to you whether you want to hang out here or in the work adventure or whatever. Uh, I, I don't know if like people, uh, if somebody uh, has something to ask, please ask. Uh, if not, we just can finish here. Yeah. Or maybe we can like continue uh like you said in, in the like other room maybe like people don't don't want to ask <laughs> here could be maybe they don't, don't want to be recorded who knows mm -hmm. okay yeah thank you very much uh for uh your speech uh, see you around then yeah thank you yeah have a nice day you too bye-bye yeah bye